So it's been a while since I've checked out the amazing things you guys built on the workshop. So what do we have over here? Core attack by Fant. So yeah, apparently with this mod we can spawn in waves of enemies. Which is gonna be pretty cool. Alright, let's place one of these things down. So, oh, it's already starting, I think. There was a timer. And wave one is just one toad bot. But yeah, this is great to test farming defenses. Or maybe even combat vehicles. Yeah, my aim is really not the best. I believe the thing will take damage just if the bot is near it. I mean, so basically, if I were to just lure all of them away from the core. Yeah, it would be kind of cool if they would attack the core. Like, they do crops and survival. Oh, they actually do. My bad. But yeah, let's see what happens when our health drops to Z. Okay, I should not lure the bots away. Will the thing just explode? We get confetti. Oh no. And there's also two mini golf courses. I think this... Yeah, this is so big. I'm gonna need a flat world for this. Uh, oh my god, this is so laggy. Welded to the ground. Well, maybe I should read the description. Yeah, on physics one, this runs a lot smoother. I must say this looks really good. Like, there's lots of different obstacles for the different holes. Like, this is seriously impressive. He even rebuilt a craft, but this is, this is so brilliant. Now, first we're gonna need some balls. And yeah, this is actually pretty convenient, because you can just place down your lift and spawn in another ball. Alright, and then you're just supposed to, um, hammer the ball. I'm just trying to get the right angle, and... There was a weird trajectory for the ball, to be honest. Maybe it's because there's a thing missing. Alright, let's try again. Yep, the trajectory is a lot smoother, but I missed. Sadly, I cannot control the strength of my punch, so... I think, though, if I change the angle, the ball is gonna bounce a bit, but it's not gonna be as fast. So if I basically just walk on the ball and then punch like this... Oh god, this actually works! Doesn't... Oh god, this doesn't really make me good at playing. Yay, now it worked. Maybe it did have to do with my ball mod. Oh god. <laughs> I must say the scrap mechanic physics are surely making this interesting. But yeah, there's probably enough content here to make at least two videos. <laughs> Let me know if you're interested in that. And next we have this really good looking truck. Like, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good with all of these details over here. Right, so let's hop inside. Okay, the steering is a little tough, but I mean, it's a truck. And of course, we've also got lights on this one. But now, of course, this is not just a regular truck. So once I press button number three, crazy things are gonna happen. This whole thing will slowly transform into, like, a transformer, basically. <laughs> As you probably guessed by now, I don't even understand how you build these creations. Oh god, why am I so slow? Okay, I'm really slow once I start turning, which I think is actually a good thing, since this prevents you from flipping. We can even move our arms to shoot potatoes, at least if I press button 5, which would be cool if I still had the, um, oh god, wave thing on there. Yeah, I'm just moonwalking. This, this is completely normal. I think I'm stuck. Or am I? Yeah, I'm stuck. But yeah, this thing is actually fairly stable. Like, David Baguetta's builds are always incredible. RC PLP 50 and Iron Man inside. So we've got a tiny car over here with Iron Man who's driving it. Now obviously the car is built like this for a reason. Because we can actually remotely control the car. Now this uses some sort of glitch. So to make this work we press the red button which removes the cardboard. Okay, it's just screwed up. We need to be fast, so we press a red button, pull out the connect tool, grab the green logic gate, then we connect it to the white logic gate. And now, this should actually be remote controlled. So if I now press W, oh my god, it actually drives. I mean, Iron Man drives. Like, this is so cool. I really don't get why we not have these things in vanilla. Oh, I mean, without glitches. It would be so cool to have wireless logic. Yeah, now I'm just driving off into the distance. Like, it feels so weird not having your camera attached to the car. But yeah, it's seriously amazing what these guys built here. I also don't get how just one logic connection can handle WASD. Next, we have a Lamborghini Huracan STO. Now, this requires three mods. Wow, this looks really good. I think it's probably just all of these polygon parts. And you can definitely also see how some modded parts and detail, like these grills over here. Like, this just looks so good. It could just be a model in a low-poly game and you wouldn't even notice. But yeah, let's see how this thing drives. Okay, I think we just have one. Okay, what is this? I am not gonna bother with the mod. We have one button, which is 
for the lights and the other buttons don't do anything. Yep, that's pretty straightforward lights. The steering really feels good on this one. And yeah, of course we don't have any suspension because this is a sports car. Okay, this is not an amphibious car. Also, yeah, we can steer in the water. I think this is why the steering is so good. A Kitty Super Ultra Survival Mode Compatibility Pack Mega. What a mouthful. But yeah, this is looking really epic. So what this basically is, is a compatibility patch. So this means we can play with the Craftbot Plus mod, Fan mod, the mod pack, Ranger's Tools and Forestry mod. And all mods also have recipes. If you've never heard of these mods, you should watch my 10 best survival mod videos. But yeah, this is pretty huge if it actually works. So I think I'm gonna try doing that. So to install this mod pack, we need to manually install all of these five supported mods. I also made a whole tutorial on how to install survival mods. There's even instructions for each individual mod. Cause like the forestry mod folder is kind of a mess. Okay, I think my scrap mechanic folder is getting quite cluttered. But I think I'm done. Yeah, my game is also now just completely black. All right, after like five solid minutes of black screen, here we go. I guess this actually works. This would be amazing because this mod pack is just so huge. And I know a lot of you want to play with so many mods, but yeah, maybe we do actually get real mod support soon. Okay, I think it's... Oh god, it looks like it's working. Like we definitely have the XP bar from the fan mod. And all of these stats too. Okay, let's go into unlimited. Oh my god, is this actually working? Look, we've got the Rager's tools and the fan mod. And also all the interactables from the... Oh my god, this is huge. Like, I'd really want to start a whole survival series with this mod pack. <laughs> let's just have a quick look at the craft mod. Oh my god, there's so much stuff in here. This is crazy. <laughs> Why are there so many recipes for fertilizer? I don't even want to imagine how long it took to put all of these mods together. Honestly, I'm kind of speechless. So from what I read on the mod page, there should be a lot of new recipes at the trader as well. We can even craft sunshade. No, That's nice. Like, this is absolutely incredible. If you want to have a really new survival experience, just download this mod pack. There's just so much stuff in here. All right, looks like we're just jumping to the next mod. Collision Destruction Physics. So this mod adds one new part, the Destruction Physics Activator. All right, and we can place this pretty much anywhere on the map and we don't even need to do anything. As long as this part is somewhere on the map, we've got Destruction Physics now. And yeah, this can apparently cause a bunch of lag if you have huge creations. So I think the best way to test this is to just, oh God, drive at full speed into a wall but it's kind of difficult with this car. I guess I can also just drive into a tree. Oh God, my, my wheel. <laughs> okay, this is, oh my, this would be epic for like destruction derby or something. Like this would be insane. Okay, I've just hit another tree. Um, So far my car is still looking all right. But yeah, with my driving skills, it's not gonna take long until I hit the next one. And, oh, <laughs> now one of the other wheels is gone. This is really interesting. And I like how my car, okay, I, I was just gonna say how it still sort of drives, but yeah, this is pretty much not working anymore. All right, so I've got a bit of a bigger car over here. I think this should allow us to uh, assess the damage more clearly. And yeah, there's just some blocks disappearing. Now this is really interesting. Yep, I think this car already broke. Yep, my, my engine just disappeared. Now, I think the block that will disappear is random, which is kind of sad because I'm so lucky that only all of the other seats disappeared. This is so funny. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's just random, the blocks that disappear. So it's not collision based. I mean, it kind of is, but like this is still a lot of fun to play with. And yeah, let me know if I should try a demolition derby or some battle bots with this. Because that could be so awesome. Maybe I could even invite some viewers or something. The legendary car. I really like how the preview image looks like. Okay, so for some weird reason, the car is linked to this blueprint, which looks kind of sus. See, I'm not going to download this and I hope this will just work on its own. All right, yeah, I think that's really just a world crasher. And yeah, maybe I should disable the destruction physics mod. All right, I, I really like the look of this one. Like for all vanilla, this is really well done. Now let's see what this car can do. We even have a little bit of interior in here. All right, let's fire up the engine and oh yeah, that's, that's quite fast. And the steering is of course excellent. And I don't think it's glitch steering either. So that's really good job there. And you can also see the blinkers working. Like, yeah, that's really cool. I like when workshop cars do this. 
Okay, now we don't have the speedometer, the Lamborghini had, but why is this so laggy? <laughs> Let's try simple seven. Yeah, this is much better. Okay, now the, the I don't okay, now the car doesn't drive as well. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of wonky now. Anyway, let's see what all these fun buttons do. Okay, one is just the radio. Two are our lights and three... Oh, we can open the hood. Nice. Well, I don't really see much going on here. What does this with? Okay, this is for... Okay, now I'm stuck in the hood. That might have been a bad idea. Oh, we also have a trunk. I didn't notice. Oh, you can see how the blinkers work. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I really like how fast this car is. Post apocalyptic ice cream truck. It's modified in case of a zombie attack. Brings out the secret weapon. All right, now I'm kind of intrigued. I mean, it does look like an ice cream truck. Now, it's not a true ice cream truck unless it plays ice cream truck music. Yeah, I don't think they put a whole music bot in there. Oh god, this is so well done, these ice cream cones. I mean, okay, it's a glitch welded cone, but it looks pretty cool. I really like how they just put an other at the top. Makes me wonder if they also produce sunshake ice cream, because I would eat a lot of that stuff. But yeah, we've even got some interior in here. I mean, I'm not seeing secret weapons yet, so not sure what to expect in this regard, but yeah, this looks really cool. They just like an ice cream truck. Okay, we probably should close the doors, hop into the driver's seat, and let's see what this thing can do. Oh, I, I bet the ice cream cone is just gonna open, and then there's gonna be a spot gun in there or something. Let's press button two. Okay, we just closed the ice cream shop. And yeah, this is really laggy as well. Did I get rid of the destruction physics? I think so. All right, are you ready for the secret weapon? It is... Okay, it's at the front and we've got a saw blade. Yeah, this is super laggy. Let's just turn it to seven. This is so much smoother. But yeah, the, the steering is not the best. I, like, I'm trying to steer right now and it doesn't turn. It's much better on advanced physics, but then it's so laggy. Oh God. This is really not a big creation. I really hope we're going to see some optimization soon. Apparently, here's a whole plane at scale. Apparently, this took 60 plus hours of work. Oh my god. All right, let, let's see if I can fly this thing. I doubt so, but I should probably join the flat world. And yeah, I forgot to put the new legend mod in the world. Well, it's a big boy. Oh my god. How am I gonna fly this thing? I mean, it can't be that difficult, right? Oh, there's a door. Oh, we'll just have to jump. Nice. But yeah, this looks pretty cool. I think this is a cargo plane. Wait, is this lift functional? Okay, I think it's just for aesthetics. Oh, let's see if we can lower the hatch over here. Oh, yes, we can. Let's try to get some cargo on this plane, shall we? How will... Okay, I'm not gonna do the ice cream truck. It's gonna be too laggy. But maybe the Lamborghini... Okay, we don't have the right mod. Okay, but I think I'll just use my good old survival car. Because it's not as big as some of the other stuff. Okay, I think this makes flying the plane 10 times worse, but... It's gonna be fine? What does this button do? I don't know. Let's just keep it active. The cockpit looks really amazing. Just with all of these random... Like, it's completely filled with the useless buttons. Okay, let's see if there's more stuff here for... Okay, this does not have any connections. But I mean, I could just replace some blocks and... Okay, maybe I should not have done this. All right, I think let's try to fly this thing then. Okay, I just pressed one button and the... Oh god, it's already going. What does this do? 100%. Why are we not taking off? Okay, we're pulling in the landing gear, which is good, since we want to take off. This is... Okay, there's a second camera. That's cool. No, there's already the world border. <laughs> yeah, it does support WASD controls after all, but... It took me a little too long to figure out. The best thing is, I don't really remember which buttons I pressed. No, that's camera. That was... I don't know, what did this button do? Okay, I think... Is it working? Oh, okay, we got airplane control, so I need to press S to, you know, rise. Oh god, there's already the world border. No! <laughs> I'm just learning how to fly! But yeah, this is one of the reasons we would pick up creative worlds, because, yeah, it's kind of hard to fly, fly planes here. S especially if you have no idea how to fly them, but I guess you could figure this out if you want. Oh, wait, actually, is my is my car still in here? Uh, I don't think so. Yep, my my, my car's gone. Looks like we've got a truly amphibious car over here. Amphibian alligator. Like, I'm surprised those amphibious cars are not more popular. Like, yeah, it looks really nice. We've even got a machine gun on here. But yeah, of course, it's just for aesthetics. And of course, a duck figurine. Now, the passenger can control one light, which is interesting. At least they can do something. Now, we can control the big lights. And there's a switch, which 
Oh, it's for the radio. That's kind of convenient, just plugging a switch. Okay, so if we turn, we also turn the machine gun. Like, if this were an actual machine gun, this would be so annoying to fire with, because you would constantly drive around like this. Would actually be kind of funny, but yeah, uh, speaking of driving, this drives pretty well. Like, it turns nicely, it looks like... Does it actually have suspension? I don't know. But the wheels are big, so that's pretty good. Now, I'll just need to find some water, and we can actually, you know, put it to the real test. All right, let's see what this thing can do. It looks... Okay, it's floating. Now, how is this thing amphibious? Why does it move? Oh, there's a... Oh, there's thrusters. That's really smart. And I think they glitch welded or something because I don't know how else you would turn on, uh, on the water. I think our mechanic is just getting a little bit wet. But yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> like, it exactly does what it promises. Okay, I think I just realized the water surface itself is not really reflective at nighttime, so... And it looks really cool with the thruster glow, though. The Opel GT Nomad. They're actually using painted license plates at the bottom of the car. That's really creative. But damn, does this look good for vanilla. How did you make this little door handle? This is great. Let's see. It's one of these cars where my mechanic is blind while driving it. Yeah, this makes for an amazing first-person view. But yeah, this is really fun to drive around. The engine definitely has some performance and you can steer quite well. So I assume one is radio, two is backlights, and yep, that's front light, so fairly basic. But yeah, I think it was mainly built for the aesthetics of the Opel GT, which ended up quite well, honestly. Now, I don't know how he did it, but Kivion uploaded a GIF as a workshop thumbnail. Okay, I asked him on Discord. He used the tool where you can upload custom images and set them as your preview image. So this is really cool that this is possible. And like, what is really fascinating about this car is I think it runs on a working piston engine. And I'm, I'm really excited to see a piston car because they're quite rare on the workshop. Like, I wouldn't notice from the outside that this is actually a piston car. It's like really compact. You can see there's no engine inside. It's all just pistons. But yeah, of course this also looks really well. Like else it wouldn't really be at the top of the shop. But I like the different ways people find to build these mirrors in Scrap Mechanic. But yeah, let's just hop in. We have one button which is for our lights. Now they don't really seem to work that well in nighttime, but, but yeah, this is quite noisy. And yeah, I think this car does not exactly have off-road suspension, so yeah, I'm pretty much... Wait, how did I get unstuck? I mean, except for the sounds, I don't really notice the piston engine as much. Like, the acceleration feels a little weird, because I'm so used to gas engines and stuff. But yeah, this is incredible how well it works, especially because it's so small. Now, one thing I really notice is that uh, I can't really brake. Because yeah, once I stop uh, pressing W, the engine will just slowly stop spinning. Oh god, I think, yeah, we can actually see all of the piston stuff going on here. Which, oh god, this looks so confusing. Oh, now I've noticed, yeah, there's the glass window where we can actually have a look at the piston engine. I'm really smart. How did I not notice this? Yeah, I think this is a good view. Wow, this is incredible. Like, I tried building some stuff with pistons before and it just glitched all over the map. I think it even crashed my world. But yeah, this is on advanced physics too. Like, getting stuff to work this smoothly, really good job here. It's incredible how much amazing stuff here is. Next, there's the Subnautica prawn suit. I think it's incredible, like, that you can build these mechs and scrap mechanic. These glitch welded ducks. I find it kind of disturbing, honestly. Now, I think there were some instructions on how to get inside this thing. Oh, the seat is between the two thrusters. Okay, it's not very intuitive. All right, I can't wait. Oh, yeah, it's walking. Okay, it's... it's. Oh, God, what is wrong with the glitch steering here? I was just gonna say, oh, it's walking slowly but stable, but then it just goes full-on pogo dance mode. Dude, this turns way too quickly. Okay, and in first person, it doesn't look that great. Okay, now we've got the different buttons, which we can use to control our arms, which is pretty cool. Oh god, we can even jump. Nice. Okay, so basically, this is also like a flyer, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> and five is to activate our lights. It, this thing should work underwater. I'm so disappointed if this thing doesn't work underwater. That would be such a shame. And yeah, it, wow, it actually, wow. Okay, it's not as, um, it's a little bit more than I expected it to be. Yeah, this, sh this should be a little heavier. I think I'll just place it down again. Okay, I mean, honestly, this is not the, the greatest experience. Why is it playing the splash animation over there? I'm shooting the potatoes on the other. How does this work? 
Well, although it's not perfect underwater, it's still a really cool walker. Then we get an entire Millennium Falcon. Oh, I, I still have the plane here. I kind of forgot. Um, how, how do I get rid of the plane? Oh, God. Like, this is just really cool. Oh, look at the lights. Oh, yeah, that definitely looks nice at night. Now, it said there's also full interior, which I'm kind of excited about. Okay, th there's some crates inside, you know? It's not like we have a lot of interior in Scrap Mechanics, so I guess that's okay. No, there's a lot of different seats here. Oh, that's for the different cannons. That's that's really cool. Oh, you can even angle them and stuff. Nice. Oh, this platform. Nice. You can just enter the thing through this hatch. That's really cool. All right, so apparently this thing is easy to fly. Oh, is this a jukebox? Yeah, button one is to hover. I think two is to go up. Okay, I don't think I closed the uh, thing. Yeah, then it's just WASD. Oh god, this is so cool. Yeah, this uses a real gyroscope. So you can see it's a little wonky, but it works. Actually kind of impressive. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, that's bad. Well, let's test if I press button number three, I can walk around while flying. I'm surprised they can actually walk around. Like, it's not perfect, but I don't glitch out anymore. Yeah, there's like a huge difference. That's really cool. And I like how the thing just keeps falling down if I just fall out of it. How, how does it know when I get heated out of it? There's so many cool things on the workshop, but there's one last thing I want to show you. The Scrap Mechanic Patch Machine. Now, this thing will actually modify the scrapmechanic.exe and allow us to play Scrap Mechanic offline. Like, if you ever tried playing Scrap Mechanic without internet, it just doesn't work. And it doesn't make sense. So I'm really excited to give this one a try. And it also allows us to have the dev console when joining people that don't have it. Which I guess we can test on Carl. Now, this mod includes an XE, so run it at your own risk. But there's a GitHub if you want to check out the code before. Alright, then we just select both patches. It automatically finds the scrapmechanic.exe location for us. I'll just click apply and I think it's installed. So I just disconnected my internet here. Like, yeah, I can't go on YouTube. And now if I launch Scrap Mechanic, it tries to synchronize to Steam Cloud. It just launches. Oh my God, it works. Now the other test is launching it with the dev console and joining Carl and see if that works. Yeah, I'll probably need to have my internet back for that. But you can actually see I opened the menu in Scrap Mechanic and it says I'm disconnected. All right, let's give Carl a go. Oh my God, what is going on on the server? Is there a sunshake train? That is incredible. Also, you can now see in the console while Carl is so laggy, there's so much network data going on. This is so crazy. Oh my God, stop exploding stuff. Anyway, so if you wanted to play Scrap Mechanic offline, the patch thing is what you've been waiting for. My highlight today has definitely been the mod pack. I mean, the patch thing that contains the mod pack and all the mod pack. It's just crazy having so much bots in survival. So if you want to learn more about survival mods, definitely check out the survival mod videos I've done before. Like, it's crazy to see what the modding community has done. Oh god, the sunshake truck has arrived, so that's what I'm gonna do now. Have a good time.